Greetings, everybody, and welcome to episode 7 of Quantum Evolution. This episode concentrates on parasites, and this is a product of my own journey in eradicating parasites from my life. Um, still in progress, but I'm having great success. So I'm sharing my research with you on that. Um, and just to start off with, there are two different kinds of parasites. There's physical parasites, like worms, and there's also etheric parasites, um, somewhat like ghosts, but we'll get into that. Um, so parasites are physical beings that use other living beings for food and shelter. They consume nutrients at the expense of the host, basically. So you think of a fungus on a tree, you know, it'll kill a tree in, in, in the end. But um, in general, parasites don't want to kill their host. They just want to use what they can and then move on to the next. Um, so sometimes they do kill but that's not their intention. Um, they produce uh, worms and, and physical parasites produce toxic waste in the form of ammonia, which can just wreak havoc on the body in so many ways. Your joints can ache, you can get autoimmune diseases, um, and it can just kind of like shut down your organs. So that's a really important uh, aspect of parasites to pay attention to that's not really talked about a whole lot. Um, and it does cause disturbances to the immune system, which can lead to serious health deterioration. In some cases, parasites also form cysts, like uh, tapeworms do if they lodge in your brain. Um, the eggs sit there for a long time and they just build up and that can cause very, very big problems in the brain. And you can get rid of parasites, but you can't get rid of the damage they do. So it's just something that we all need to pay attention to and pay and give energy to, to make sure that we don't end up with these problems. Humans can get parasites via infected food or water, uh, bug bites sometimes, uh, contact with infected humans or animals. So some parasitic uh, diseases are easily treated and some are not. And parasites in humans range from one cell's paramecium to 20 foot long tapeworms. When a bacterial parasite infects a host, uh, it grows into more bacteria and then spreads to a different host. So this is when it's considered a, a parasitic bacterium and an example is strep throat, um, also salmonella, syphilis, gonorrhea, cholera, smallpox, and the bubonic plague. Fungus is also a parasite, such as candida, which is a really big problem in our society. And waterborne bacterial parasites, such as Giardia and Cryptosporidium, are the most common forms of parasitic diseases in the United States. For the most part, uh, bacterial parasites can be eliminated with antibiotics if you choose to go that route. I would, uh, you know, use something more like colloidal silver or um, uh, MMS, but uh, there's so many different ways to deal with, with uh, bacterial infections at this point. Um, then there's the larger parasites, the worms. So some examples include roundworms, tapeworms, pinworms, whipworms, hookworms. And because parasites come in so many different shapes and sizes, they cause a very big range of problems. Some of them just consume your food and they leave you kind of hungry after your meal, which is weird and that should make you question. Um, others feed off your red blood cells, causing anemia. Some lay eggs that can cause itching, irritability, and insomnia. If you've tried countless approaches to heal your gut and relieve your symptoms without any success, a parasite could be the underlying cause for your unexplained and unresolved symptoms. Once a person is infected with a parasite, it's very easy to pass it along. If you have a parasite and don't wash your hands after using the restroom, you can easily pass microscopic parasite eggs onto anything you touch. The door handle, the salt shaker, your phone, shaking hands, whatever. It's also easy to contract a parasite when handling animals. So hand washing is imperative to prevent parasite contamination and tr transmission. And I just have to say that if you let your dogs lick you 
on the mouth, you know, you're going to have parasites, you know, you see them licking their butt and then they're licking you on the mouth. You're getting the eggs like right, right like that. It's just whenever I see that happening, I'm just, you know, I just want to kind of help that person understand that this is not OK. But at the same time, sleeping in beds with pets and I'm guilty of that is also really bad. And, um, you know, unless you're constantly deworming your 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 animals, then you're going to be just giving and taking all the time. It's one of the one of the problems of living with pets. So here are some of the symptoms of a parasitic infection that you might want to look out for. Chronic digestive issues or irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, if you suffer from mental or emotional stress. Uh, immune disorders, cancer, the inability to fall or stay asleep. If you wake up a lot at night, can you find that happening night after night after night? It very well could be from uh, parasites because they are most active at night and that would be the cause of the disturbance. If you grind your teeth, if you have a lack of uh, energy or motivation, if you feel like you're apathetic, if you feel hungry after eating, if you are iron defi deficient, uh, anemic, and if you have skin irritations such as hives, rashes, eczema, or rosacea. So these are all red flags for a parasitic infection. Not to say that they are, if you have it, you have, it's not definitive, but it's, if you have any of those symptoms, you might ask your doctor for a parasite test. Um, and, you know, from my point of view and from the quantum point of view, uh, pharmaceuticals uh, that they use, that, uh, that the medical industry uses um, to treat parasitic infections are highly toxic to humans as well and will cause you a lot of problems. And there are ways to eradicate parasites um, without pharmaceuticals, but you have to be willing and able to do that, and not everybody is. So you have to know yourself to know whether or not you want to try an alternative approach. Um, my great find in this quest was Dr. Holda Clark, who was a Canadian uh, naturopath and researcher, and she was one of the foremost authorities on parasites as a fundamental cause of disease, and she created a really wonderful protocol for eliminating parasites. So her recipe, which you can get from her site, which is uh, Dr. Clark, let me see, drclarkstore.com, that's uh, D-R-C-L-A-R-C-S-T-O-R-E.com. Uh, she has all of her protocol. She's, she's, uh, she passed away in 2009, but her business is still running strong. Um, so she uses black, uh, the hulls of black walnuts, the green hulls of black walnuts in a tincture. So in the fall, if you know some place where you can get black walnuts, you can go and just collect them off the ground when they have the green hull. And then just cut away the green um, part of it and stick it in a mason jar with uh, grain alcohol, like Everclear or something like that. Um, and then let it sit for about six weeks and then you have your tincture. And it'll last about a year, you know. So uh, you can make it for yourself, you can make it for others. But that needs to be used in conjunction with wormwood. And we can grow wormwood in our gardens. It's also known as Artemisia absinthium. And when uh, at the peak of uh, the, the growth period, probably in July or August, you want to cut leaves and dry them. And then you can just like put them in a mortar and pestle and crush them and either take it with honey in a you know tea or um, put them in capsules, whatever you want to do. But it's really important that the black walnut hull mixture and the wormwood are used together. And what these do is they uh, kill off the adult parasites. And then you need to use it with freshly ground cloves, uh, really high quality cloves, which you can all get from her store. Um, and this actually kills the eggs. So you're getting them at every stage. And if you don't do this attack on, on the parasites for a month, you know, like straight up, then, um, you know, you'll just leave yourself open for reinfection. There's another um, product that is recommended to deal with the ammonia aspect, the, the waste products of the uh, parasites, and this is called ornithine. And so if you take ornithine at bedtime, it's going to help you sleep better. Um, and there's no overdosing with this protocol. There are no interactions. Anybody can take it. Kids can take it. Adults can take it. Pets can take it. You can also put, um, make cilantro tea 
and put it on your pet's um, food. And this, they love it. It's just like they, they, they just know intrinsically that this is uh, something that's going to help them. And then you can sprinkle the cloves and you can sprinkle the wormwood and you can, um, you know, maybe dry up and, and mash up some of the black walnut hulls as well and put it on their food. So, um, so pets, animals, kids, adults, old people, this is really, really good for anybody. So I just want to show you, this is a Terminator Zapper. It has two copper uh, electrodes on the outside. Uh, you can turn it on and off here. It runs on a 9-volt battery. And on the inside, let me see if I can get this open. I have to drop it sometimes to get it open. But this is on the, the inside. So it has um, organite. There is a uh, rare earth uh, magnet down here. Uh, there's organite, there's crystals in here as well, and then this uh, twisted copper is a very energizing um, structure that you'll be seeing as quantum energy comes more into our view. Um, so this is a quantum device. Um, you turn it on and you wear it. Um, so you're supposed to wear it for 30 days, and I get a ace bandage and I just put it on right there, and I have it for, you know, as long as I can take it. Sometimes. Um, if as you're cleaning yourself out, it'll burn a little bit, um, and I actually got a uh, when I first the first day I, 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 I had a hole in my stomach that's still healing, um, so you have to move it around. You can't keep it in one place, um, but wherever you feel like you have parasites, put it in that area, and um, and then just keep it there, and then wear it you know for 30 days, but change it around your body as much as possible. Um, but this is called the Terminator Zapper, and it's by a guy named Don Croft, and it's an improvement on Hulda Clark's Zapper. Um, and so not only does it just create uh, an electricity, a very small level of electricity, there's also sound going into your body. So it's healing by sound and electricity, um, both which, you know, uh, disengage the, um, the vibration at which the parasites are happy. And makes it very uncomfortable for the parasites so that they just want to leave. And in addition, they also elevate your pH. It's doing so many different things at once, and it's a fantastic medicinal device, quantum healing right here in a very, very simple um, element. This little tiny box can do so much. And I, uh, you know what, my, when I, the first day I wore it, even though I got that burn on my stomach, I'm like, I just felt like, wow, I felt like, like energized, you know, and I felt like my head cleared up, like I, my, my thinking cleared up, you know. So I literally uh, am feeling the effects of it. I'm feeling so much more empowered. I've had this for about three weeks now. I'm feeling empowered. I feel like I could absolutely accomplish my goals. Like, you know, there's a weight that has been relieved from my aura, um, making the future uncloudy, I'm not afraid to express myself anymore, and I'm able to express myself more clearly. And I really do attribute it to this device helping me to get rid of the both physical and uh, etheric parasites, which have been living in my body for a very, very, very long time. I know that I've had physical parasites since I was a girl. And so it, this, this clearing, it's, it's going to take a while. It doesn't happen in a short amount of time. It's a process, as with everything. So redefining who you are, um, learning how to eat more healthy, learning how the kind of foods that we've been, you know, uh, sold through TV commercials that we get used to, convenience foods, are really, really, really stopping us from being the very, very best we can be. And that's my goal as a person, is to achieve my purpose in what is this incarnation of humanity. And I know it has to do with my trumpet. I know it has to do with quantum physics. I know it has to do with kids and women, you know, and, and, and just helping people to really understand how absolutely powerful they are. And we just need to remove the blocks so that we can step into that full empowerment and accomplish the absolutely magnificent things that we are meant to do. All I can say is from my own experience is that when I found out that I had worms, when I finally accepted that I had parasites living in my body, I recognized it because I'm a producer and I would just freak out after, um, uh, you know, at, at the end of my events. And there was no logical reason for this. And, you know, I have to say I'm going through menopause, um, but that still just is not a logical reason for this kind of an outburst. So um, I, did, I had already been 
looking into parasites and studying them and I realized, you know, the parasites are the ones that they, they, they need that negative energy. They thrive in low pH, high acidic environments. So what I mentioned in my last episode on quantum nutrition should be applied as well in your quest to eradicate parasites. We need to elevate our pH, you know, um, stop the junk food, stop the sugar, stop the chemicals, stop the GMOs, you know, get to a, uh, as, as close to a raw food diet as possible. You know, if you just do this for a year, don't dedicate the rest of your life to it, but say for, for right now, in my healing of my body, mind and spirit, I'm going to go full on vegan or at least vegetarian um, and cut out as much animal products as you can, um, replace the, the bad fats with the good fats. And you know what? I'm not against meat, um, but, uh, but it's very difficult to digest. And it's, it, it kind of lowers our, um, our, our body's ability to fight other things when it's having to digest meat. So limit the meat. Don't, you don't have to cut it out if you don't want to. Or if you're vegan, then you should be happy with it. Um, but, uh, but, but the main things are really sugar, GMOs, um, and just getting, your, getting your, your body to the highest pH that you possibly can. All right. So that's the end of the part on uh, physical parasites and at the very end I'm going to put a list of resources for this um, and now we're going to go into the second form of parasites which is etheric parasites um, so just as there are physical parasites there are also non-physical or etheric parasites that can attach themselves to a person drain their energy and influence their thoughts feelings and personality our understanding of etheric parasites at this point in time is not unsimilar to the state of medical awareness 150 years ago when they had no clue about viruses and bacteria as the fundamental cause of disease. So at that time, people fell ill and they used prayer or leeches in att an attempt to heal themselves. And there were some remedies like oregano oil, but, um, but uh, you know, limited to the wise woman, right? So um, but today it's the same issue. Um, people get etheric parasites and they don't know the cause, they don't know the remedy, they don't even know that they have them. They just act out of emotion. So once we understand that emotions, in many cases, not all, but many cases, are being caused by things that are being parasites on our bodies, then we have a much, much, much greater opportunity at healing ourselves and becoming whole, becoming productive, becoming, you know, our best versions of ourselves. So, etheric parasites are thought forms, uh, temporary beings generated in the etheric plane. In occultism, they are also called tulpas, egregores, or larvae. The etheric plane is a substructure underlying our material reality. Remember, we can only see 0.3% of the entire spectrum of light and sound. So we only have access to 0.3% of everything that is around us. So um, there's a lot going around us that we're not able to see. Etheric energies and constructs influence physical events at the quantum level. And they are generated by human thoughts infused with emotion and intent. An entity's purpose is to continue its own survival by feeding off the same kinds of energy that gave rise to it. So. If it was generated through hate, it's going to look for somebody who is at that same vibration and who will induce the hateful feelings. And then it will attach onto that person in order to get more of that food, right? And then once it's attached, it can influence and uh, uh, affect the person's thoughts and emotions in order to create even more. So it's a it's a cycle that's repeating. It's the same concept as the food that we eat for physical parasites. Our emotions are a chemical form of energy and so they're literally feeding off that chemical form of energy and you won't find parasites feeding off joy, at least that I know of. Maybe angels, you know, but I, I, don't, I don't even think so. I think that love is just the you know, the, when you're we're at the higher um, uh, states of, of frequency, um, that's not a place where etheric parasites are able to, you know, survive. So that's our intention is to get to those higher places at, uh, at all the time, you know, like just 
replace all the negative with with the positive, and then and then the negative won't have uh, any place to latch onto, quite literally. So there are three kinds of etheric spirits. The first is the earthbound spirit, which generally refers to a human who passed on and didn't make it out. Um, so they're here until they find a way to exit this, uh, this dimension. They're usually attached by fear or loss, and they're usually bound to a specific place. So um, they're not going to be able to move beyond that place. Maybe it's their home, maybe it's their town, maybe it's a bar that they used to go to, right? Um, they can be friendly, or they can be mischievous, or they can be malevolent. Earthbound spirits can be bothersome but they do engage with humans um, not too much. So this is kind of the ghosts, the people who are just, you know, they're here, they're just not quite out of this dimension yet. They still have a foot in. The second kind of etheric being is called a higher dimensional being. And these are beings whose consciousness is centered in the fourth density. We're in the third density. And, uh, and it, could, it could be higher, fifth or more. Uh, and sometimes they engage with humans. They have an individual soul, um, and they come in all different forms through multiple dimensions. So uh, they could be other dimensional beings. They could be what some people think of as extraterrestrials or aliens, but they are not of the third dimension. Some are benevolent, um, for instance, angels. Some are malevolent, and then others are in between. So they're not all bad, they're not all good. If uh, the entity is malevolent or manipulative, they are able to influence a, pa a person. So if they are malevolent or manipulative, they can really gain power over a person. Um, and this is what I think that I have been experiencing, you know, in those times of intense pressure when I just act out of in insane craziness, which is not my personality. You know, it's somebody else literally taking over my personality in order to get the food they need to survive. And, you know, this may happen once a year or once every five years or whatever it is. That's all the entity needs to feed. But if you see yourself acting in a way that's just not yourself, you have to question, is that, is that, is something else controlling me? What is it? You know, and then once your mind creates the awareness of such a thing happening, the possibility then, then you're well on your way to, um, you know, getting rid of it and becoming a whole again. The third type of etheric entity is called non-human negative entities. So these are what people typically refer to when they say that they have an entity in their field or attached. So a non-human negative entity often possesses people by living within the host's energy body, so our aura, right? They act like parasites, mostly unbeknownst to the host. The most common food is emotional energy. Again, same thing. It's all emotional energy. They do not have individual souls. They are a collective mind, but they may act in individual ways. Um, most of them aren't actually malevolent. They are simply fulfilling a parasitical survival instinct. They're just hungry. They farm their food the same way that humans farm animals. They're skillful at turning on an emotional tap of the human host so that whenever they get hungry, they can just drink their fill. They hone in on emotional vulnerabilities and imbalances and tend to hook a tentacle right at that touch point. So for me, it's like I feel them in my back and, and it's the muscles underneath my scapula. And I know that they're in there and I can feel there's just like a, a, a pressure there that shouldn't exist. And it's not a nod. It's not a physical thing. It's just something there that I know needs to do. It, it, it's just waiting for the next opportunity to turn me on to that emotional craziness, right? Um, so, um, as soon as they're hungry, they push the button and slurp up the emotional nectar that begins to flow. So um, it's really, you know, we just need to understand that we're, we're, we're as humans, we have such a limited um, sensory perception of the universe. 0.3% of the light and, and sound spectrum is what we're able to, um, to, to communicate with. And so there's so many things that exist beyond our limited ability. And these uh, etheric parasites are one, you know. So um, wh what we found is there's a few ways that um, 
the especially easy ways for people to get these kinds of etheric parasites. Drugs and alcohol are the easiest and most common way to offer your body as a potential host for a parasitic entity. They lower your body's natural defenses and your personal will. Um, and so then it's just very easy to get a parasite. Often these effects will be lack of energy, depression, anxiety, and all other types of negative emotions. We assume that these emotions are our own, and therefore we have no idea that an entity is causing the problems. Actually, the entity isn't the sole cause of the problem. An entity can only get into your energy if there's a weak spot or a hole in your aura. Most people have some weak spots which become worse under pressure or emotional stress. I am a case in point on that. And I think many people are. I'm just an example of how most people, you know, a, a very kind of general example of, of how, you know, we, we're brought up to think in a certain way and then we act out a certain way, not really understanding the full cause of the matter. Um, and just like Dr. Holda Clark has come up with this amazing uh, protocol for disengaging physical parasites, there are also ways to disengage etheric parasites. They can be removed by starving them out and or dislodging them directly. Starving them out means identifying what thoughts, emotions, and behaviors they induce and cutting them off. Transmuting or replacing those emotions with their polar opposites, whatever might exist in the positive. Sooner or later, the entity learns that their meal is no longer being served and they leave. This is the standard approach for dealing with astral attachments. For the astral body has to do with passions, emotions, feelings, and impressions. Dislodging them is a little bit more difficult. Uh, traditionally, this might involve exorcism or visiting someone who's practiced in shamanic journeying and depossession, or uh, there are also hypnosis techniques as well to get rid of it. Uh, and and uh, a long Epsom salt bath or a swim in the ocean uh, will help release the kind of lesser of the attachments. Uh, but for more astral, uh, powerful, etheric attachments, you have to kind of resort to internal psychic meth methods. This comes down to intent and your personal will. There's a man named Robert Bruce who talks about removing core images, uh, which traumatic I memories basically, by visualizing them as photographs being pulled away from your inner field of vision, so out of your astral body, held at arm's length, flipped over, and then visualizing the critters, the parasites, literally um, being burned along with the photograph. So this is one way to do it yourself. Um, those who have taken drugs or medication or do things that anesthetize themselves, like TV, alcohol, video gaming, especially sex addictions, because you're actually interfering with other people's entities. So you're literally getting it from other people, you know, like in that very close contact kind of a way. Likewise, any pharmaceutical that dampens and suppresses emotions actually invites entities in who are, want to feed off of those suppressed emotions. So suppression and repression is not an answer for this issue. You really have to deal with it, bring it out into the open, and replace with the polar, polar opposite of positive. There's something within you that your entity is latching onto whether it's a blockage or a distortion, they can only exist in your field if there's something to hook onto. It's important that we don't deny emotion because denial and suppression creates the gray areas where they hide. What we're looking to achieve is authentic emotional expression, which uh, is aligned with source, right? With the divine. The distortion of emotions is quite literally food for these parasites. Here's a short list of traits. <laughs> that affect and feed etheric parasites. Blaming others, anger, victimization, paranoia, fear, guilt, worry, feeling sorry for yourself, being lonely, self-deprecation, feeling unworthy or not good enough, lack of motivation, insecurity, impatience, resentment, jealousy, depression, feeling disgusted, neediness, underappreciated, irritated, trapped, avoidance of reality, or controlling nature. If you recognize any of these traits as recurring themes in your life, 
you might have an entity feeding into them and milking your emotions for food. Acknowledgement and acceptance is the first step toward the removal of etheric parasites and self-empowerment. The next step is to know that entities are normal. Most people have them and they just don't realize it. One of the most powerful things you can do is to take full responsibility for the fact that you've given and allowed these parasites a place in your field. Once you have acknowledged that, then you can figure out how to change your life so that they are no longer welcome. Whether you're dealing with physical or etheric parasites, by elevating your physical and spiritual and mental health, um, this will be the most vital tactic that you can take in regaining your health, regaining your sense of purpose. You're not alone. Your situation is not unique. And there are fantastic resources out there for you to be able to learn and be self-empowered and change your life to become the best version of yourself, to engage with the quantum and live the life that you were absolutely meant to live. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Meg Montgomery. This is Quantum Evolution. And I will be back next week with a conversation with Steve Miller, who creates um, One Step Beyond Organite. Uh, he creates scalar technology for helping us to mitigate the forces of radiation that are out in the world. So I'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching. Have a most wonderful week. Oh.